1880s, 50 men set out to build a social club in Boston, a gathering place for leaders of industry, law, politics, and science. Members were to be civic-minded. When that club, the Algonquin, opened its clubhouse, this Italian Renaissance revival stunner on Commonwealth Avenue, the Globe declared it undoubtedly one of the finest in America. The same must be true today as we take you behind the members-only doors of the Quinn House. In 2021, the Algonquin reopened after a great reimagining and extravagant restoration, abbreviated in name only. The Quinn House is short for Algonquin, so it's sort of a takeoff on a little bit of the history. We had this idea of creating a place in Boston, a place where people who are doing amazing things across the city could come together, gather, meet each other in a sort of unplanned, serendipitous way. Sandy Edgerly and her husband Paul poured their energy and an undisclosed amount of capital into the club, buying it in 2018. It's really about gathering a diverse, cross-generational group of people. We have people who are just in their 20s, just starting out their careers, and then who are more established, and those who are truly established legends in the city. We would look at portraiture in many different ways. We would Patrons of the arts, the Edgerleys brought in premier art consultant Kate Chertavian, co-curator of the Quinn's magnificent and varied collection. What a gargantuan task. Best <laughs> pandemic job ever, I mean, truly. The club came with hundreds of existing pieces. It's mostly, you know, themed pieces, landscapes, portraits of men in the club. And this is an example of old and existing and new, which, yes. is, which is what you see throughout the club. Absolutely. So I think hierarchy is um, something that we don't dwell on too much. Skateboards were hung next to traditional works. Greats and emerging artists are represented, and the Edgerleys loaned personal pieces. It's just amazing. It, it looks just like him. I think his eyes pop. My husband has beautiful blue eyes, and I think they're captured so beautifully. This portrait of Paul was painted by Julian Schnabel. Julian Schnabel is one of the greatest artists that's living today. I mean, he's the most extraordinary um, multidisciplinarian artist. A painter, architect, and filmmaker, a number of Schnabel's works were brought in as part of an artist in residence series at the Quinn. Seeing them was our invitation into this exclusive space. You might have watched Basquiat or Diving Bell and the Butterfly. He's also, he considers himself a painter, but he paints in such extraordinary mediums. He paints in plates. Who paints in plates? He's the only person I know who could ever paint in a plate. He paints with poured resin, this amazing resin portrait. He's actually pouring an amazing glossy liquid surface to the paint and it really transforms a painting into something very different. There is a tactility to it. And just to have the club kind of imbued with his spirit for a couple of months is, is really extraordinary. Promoting the arts is one example of the Quinn's commitment to the Algonquin's original promise, that vow to be civic-minded. It's one of the questions we ask in our um, sort of membership process is, what difference are you making in your field, in your community, or in the world? And in terms of including uh, people who truly make mm -hmm. a difference, the Quinn says they offer significantly discounted pricing. Yes, to a select number of people who mm -hmm. are involved in arts, civic work, or nonprofits, memberships rates are not publicly disclosed. Okay, coming up, the coordinated effort to keep the high seas safe.